All right, let's play around with this whole fake kick drum business. And when I say fake, we are now sample replacing in this case. All right, so I got trigger on as an insert, and I played around with the settings a little bit. Um, I've probably not perfected it at this point, but um, and we'll get some false triggering most likely, and we'll have to work out those kinds of things. Not a really big deal. I'm not going to get in too much depth on how to use trigger because that's a whole other video, and um, that's not really what you what you paid for here. So we're trying to get straight to the nitty gritty. Okay, let's listen and see what I've tossed on here. I've got a few different samples I've I've used. Uh, I want to kind of show you guys that first. I yeah, got the Green Day kick thing, um, kick sample. Let's see what it does. Okay, so it's it's quite a bit more cannon-like compared to our our uh, rather nice uh, uh, original kick, which is here. And I can tell right off the bat, this is going to be a, a subjective thing. Um, there is nothing devastating about our kick drum here, but it is tasteful and it does make sense in the track because it was real and there's there's no issues with fakeness and in terms of performance and, uh, you know, always sounding the same. And with Trigger, we can control those quite a bit, but I don't think sample layering ever quite sounds as real as the real thing. Now, on that, that's the other thing, is what is real, and uh, do we need it? That's always another up for debate, but when I hear our real kick here, there's a million trillion songs that go with a more natural type style of kick. Um, we all own a million records that have that, and some, you know, we also probably own Meshuggah records where the kick is just over the top and crazy. So I think there's room for both in our world, and I got a feeling, actually I'm positive, uh, Slate himself included some kind of lo-fi kicks in Trigger. So that's an option too. Uh, but in this particular case, I think uh, we're going to go with the samples just to see what we can get here. So back to the Green Day sample. My general rule of thumb when I have to make that decision is unless this band specifically asked for lo-fi, uh, indie, that kind of sound, I will always go for the overtop one. When I hear the Green Day one right there, it sounds to me like yeah, like I'm at a rock concert. That The other one sounds like a kick drum I recorded myself. So those decisions of going small add up, and I find I need to go huge every single time if I have an option. Go big or go home. That seems to, in the end, it probably still won't sound huge after I mangle it. So, anyway, uh, so the Green Day kick sounds pretty cool. Again, let's check it out one last time. Hey, and they went with a lot of that 2K, you know, even lower, you know, which will help it cut through tremendously. But what I, a thing I like to do sometimes is I do a blend. I got the ACDC kick or oh, excuse me air conditioner kick drum here which the air conditioner kick drum i uh you know kind of does that thunderstruck thing without all the ambience but uh, you get that big just something about the low end of this kick drum i just like it just sounds good to me But the only problem is it doesn't have much going on in the uh, the attack range. And so we could go in and EQ that, and it would be no big deal. But usually when I'm playing samples here, I kind of like to keep that brain on and just play around a trigger. And so what I like to do is also fire up the black album. Excuse me, the black kick, which sounds racist to me, but uh, to each his own. Uh, <laughs> anyway, all right, so we're going to uh, blend in. I'm going to blend in this uh, racist kick with the air conditioner kick drum and, and see if we can get a little more attack in there. And what do you know? We do. Of course, now we have two kick drums, so we need to turn the output level down to match. But it really, it depends. But I like having a lot of that kind of that Black Album 10K style. Uh, I'm, I'm, racist kick drum uh, with uh, the 10k uh, attack in it but we are a little bit flip-flopped in regard to we don't have the 2k sound we have a lot of bottom and a lot of real top but not a whole lot of that mid-range 2k you know whack i guess for like a stupid word so we could go with green day and be happy or we could use whatever 
it does not really matter it's all subjective and it's your your style do your thing whatever um, keep in mind that we have dynamic and velocity curves which are worth playing with i'm not going to get serious about those until in context but if the drums start sounding a little bit fake or they're too much like dang, 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 then um, we might have to play with those and those work individually for each sample so we can make it where the attack of the black album doesn't come in until later by using a, a kind of a wimpier curve kind of like that where it keeps it soft for a while until we really smack it and vice versa with the other i mean it's whatever we want to do a lot of creative options here but the thing that i want to point out is it was it's really freaking fast it's a throw trigger on there once you've read the, just one little page in the manual on uh, getting best results with trigger or whatever it says it explains it all and i mean you can be awesome at trigger in like literally two minutes so if this is your fancy uh and the samples in here are very useful for what we're doing here for rescuing drums uh, so you can tell already we're in pretty damn good shape in the kick drum department one other little thing I want to point out in this whole fake versus real business is the low end is always hard to get just right. Um, I'm, I'm talking about the kind of low end that translates onto other stereos and whatnot. And I find that it's real, it's, a, it's an art, and this is something I cover in, in other drum mixing products I'm doing because it's such an involved process. But to get a real kick drum that's relatively even, uh, like when in frequency response, uh, like, like on something like, well, wrong thing, uh, like Vox Angle Span, where it will translate nicely and have even solid big low end everywhere uh, is, is difficult on a real kick drum. It can be done, but what I find is that that takes about 15 minutes of work for me sometimes. Uh, sometimes two minutes, but it's, it's a lot of work. And the samples already have it figured out. And that low end stuff is the hardest part to hear for us home recording guys because our, our rooms are never perfect. So um, that's a major benefit to the samples that I think you should at least look at and maybe even if you're really obsessed with real but want to get the benefits of samples would be do some kind of crossover business where you use everything under i don't know 150 or 200 hertz on the samples and then use everything above 200 hertz uh for the real kick drum so you kind of get the best of both worlds i don't know it's up to you um and it's real subjective but i think in this particular case i'm just going to go big and use the samples because i know they work and they already sound awesome all right moving on <laughs> 